Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for spending your afternoon with us. Today is Thursday, October 22nd. This is a special workshop meeting of the Prescott City Council. Uh, that said, uh, let's go to the Pledge of Allegiance, and uh, Jim's going to lead us. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. I hope we didn't take everybody away from the Benghazi hearings. Uh, roll call. Mayor Kirkendall? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Cookneo? Here. Councilman Arnold? Here. Councilman Blair? Yes. Councilman Lamerson? Here. Councilman Lozell? Here. And Councilwoman Wilcox? Here. All present. Okay, we have. One discussion item, uh, Craig, I guess we move along uh, discussion of fiscal year 2016 general fund mid-year budget adjustments. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, today's workshop is to continue discussion of adjustments or potential adjustments to the adopted fiscal year 16 general fund budget. And as you recall, we have proposed that these um, adjustments become effective January 1st of 2016. The goal is to arrive at a specific list of mid-year adjustments uh, by next month, which is November. And the target figure, as we discussed previously, previously is $1.2 million through a combination of expenditure reductions and revenue enhancements. Uh, Mayor and Council, we will not be making a new presentation today. The um, uh, slide which you see up in the screen is for reference. We do have the department heads here to address any questions you may have. And certainly, uh, as I mentioned, the October 6th uh, presentation is available for reference should anyone uh, wish to look at uh, the department, uh, departmental information which was presented at that time. I think that it's important to point out each time we have a discussion about budget adjustments and what's driving them, um, in large part being the public safety personnel retirement system unfunded obligation, um, that we are going to not only uh, need to make reductions for the current fiscal year, but also the next fiscal year, and we can look forward to that uh, over the next 22 years, which is that period that PSPRS has mandated the city's uh, unfunded obligations be paid off. And that 22-year period is uniform for all of the member systems in PSPRS. So with that uh, introduction, Mayor, again, we do not have a specific presentation. Uh, I would just suggest that uh, uh, you open it for council discussion. Uh, we had a quite a lengthy presentation, as you recall, on October 6th, and that was really not the time to uh, initiate the discussion, but today uh, has been scheduled for that purpose. So with that, uh, we're ready to go from there. Okay, thanks, uh, Craig. I know that uh, several of the council members uh, had some ideas of their own, and uh, why don't we just move into that? Uh, uh, Charlie, you want to you want to take the lead, Mayor? Thank you very much, and um, you know a few statements before this goes on the uh, overhead that I think are just important basis from my perspective for everyone to understand. Number one, we have 500 amazing employees who do a lot for the city of Prescott every single day, and we have a great community of over 40,000 people who have a pretty good quality of life and know that when you call 911, someone's gonna show up. When you go to our parks, they're gonna be well taken care of. When you walk into our library, there's gonna be someone there to answer your questions. Um, looking at the presentation that was made by staff, I have put together a two-page list of some areas that I think we do need to focus some time and attention. I think the ultimate goal from staff's perspective is that they want some direction from us as to where we need to go to accomplish some of these goals. I heard at our last meeting concerns from several members of our council about cuts to public safety. And I think that those are valid concerns. But as I stated before, 
in order for us to achieve a goal of moving the city forward, cuts have to be made everywhere. So understand that today, some of what I'm going to be proposing follows parts of the presentation that we saw, but also open up the door for some discussion on some new areas that we haven't <laughs> otherwise um, looked. So um, very first item I'd like to put up is the one titled community development. Mark, thank you. And in some cases, such as community development, my position is that we should implement all of the changes and recommendations or changes that were proposed by that department related to fees, that we need to move that department to 100% cost recovery for the services that it provides. Um, that's going to mean higher building permits. It's going to mean more costly land use changes, but that department provides a specific service and that's an area that we need to focus our time and attention on. The exception to that is our preliminary application conference. That is the opportunity when someone who is thinking about doing business in the city of Prescott comes and says, here's my idea. I don't think we should run someone off right off the bat. Economic initiatives and airport. I would support implementing all of the recommended changes. In addition, I would like to evaluate a either part-time or full-time business slash real estate manager for the airport. We have decades of leases that need to be addressed. There is cost recovery opportunity there, but we need to make sure that the cost to recover those funds does not exceed uh, what we can bring in and that it actually becomes a positive. We need to continue to evaluate our leases and also our fees at the airport. General government implement all recommended staff changes and eliminate or relocate to tourism all radio and video services. Those are discretionary in my opinion and we can afford to get rid of those. Um, the positions uh, make sense based upon where we're heading as a community. Human resources implement all recommended changes. Um, this is one that is a nice thing to have and if next year's budget requires it to go away in its entirety, so be it. But I do think it's important that we recognize our employees who dedicate their time to the community. And so I would not support all of the recognition going away, but I do think we're going to have to limit what we can afford to do. IT, evaluate changes to the cost recovery model, which could ultimately lead to additional revenue to the general fund. Uh, that is one that we're going to have to rely very heavily on our IT folks about. The finance department, at this moment in time, I would not support making any changes there. I do believe that the next council, when the sales tax change occurs, um, that will be the time to evaluate finance. But the services that are being lost to the city as a whole uh, far outweigh the uh, twelve to $15,000 savings that we would see by eliminating one and a half positions that provide services to all departments. Uh, the library, which I have gotten to learn a lot more about over the past few years, and they do a lot with a little. And if it wasn't for the volunteers in that department, we would not have a library like we have it. Um, unfortunately, as I see it, we're going to need to implement at least 50% of the changes that were put up on the screen in order to facilitate the library being able to continue to move forward. The one area that I've exempted here is the youth services or youth programs. Um, every time I look around, we're cutting further opportunities for our youth in this community and the library is a safe place for them to be and I would hate to see that continue to fall away. Let's move to the next screen. Police department. Eliminate two of the vacant patrol positions. As our community grows, we may need to refill the other three ones. This does not currently affect our staffing because they are currently vacant. Uh, we do need to reduce parking enforcement to part-time. Reduce the one code enforcement position to at least part-time or eliminate that position. Reduce crime prevention to part-time. Eliminate one animal control officer. Evaluate cost recovery opportunities of our commercial enforcement officers who do weight enforcement. Weight is one of the key things that destroys our streets. Also need to evaluate cost recovery of code enforcement from the streets fund for any and all right of way enforcement. We're talking about signs and things of that. Um, if we have somebody spending time dealing with right of way, I think the streets department needs to take a look at if they can fund any of that operation. 
Currently, when someone fills out an application for a liquor license, which under state law is a privilege, not a right, in my opinion, uh, we are not cost recovering the police department's time, the clerk's time, or our building department's time, and we need to evaluate those funds. Fire department, we need to evaluate and make adjustments in our funding structure for community risk reduction, which is basically fire prevention. These are the inspectors, the plan reviewers. Currently, it appears that we do not cost recover their time. And again, they provide a specific service. Uh, we have an avenue. It will mean higher fees, but this is one of the three legs of the stool of the fire department. And I believe that we can move that area into 100% cost recovery in very short order. We need to evaluate our response types. We have talked about this for two years and we have not done enough to determine what is the city of Prescott going to send a fire engine to when someone calls 911. Does a snake removal of a snake in somebody's yard qualify? Or is it a snake in somebody's house? Is it a bee swarm that is attacking somebody or a bee swarm that's in a tree out in your backyard? We need to take the time to work through this and determine what calls the city sends out manpower to because we know from numerous, numerous times, we are in a situation where all of our fire engines, all of the automatic aid engines are on priority calls. And we need to determine if our staffing level is appropriate to continue to maintain a minimum level of response. In addition to that, there's been discussion about changing our response model, uh, potentially browning out a station or uh, going to a quick car we need to further evaluate that before we make a decision. I think we would be remiss if we said, let's do it. Um, we don't have enough data and detail as to what that would look like. That being said, in the next 60 days, um, that recommendation is going to need to come from staff as to what change, if any, we're going to make to that response model. And I'm going to point this to the city manager because he is the one who works for us we need to make a change in that response model that is respective of the concerns of our citizens related to their safety. But at the same time, we have to understand that we cannot afford the fire department that we have going forward. Recreation services implement all budget adjustments and revenue enhancements that have been put forward. In addition to that, reclassify our lake staff, which is currently a quarter million dollar budget, to reservoir staff. A large portion of their job includes maintain maintenance and ongoing operations of our reservoirs, which are for water storage. That is the primary reason that they exist. Recreation is secondary to that. Now, granted, we cannot expect that if they're going to go clean a campsite at Watson Lake, that that would qualify as reservoir maintenance and operations. However, when they are dealing with algae blooms, they're dealing with the dam, they're dealing with weed abatement, those are all items that, in my opinion, the water fund should be paying for as those are related to the water department. We need to look to cost recover the community restitution program from the departments that are benefiting from it. When they're out doing weed abatement along our streets, that is something that the streets fund, which has a dedicated revenue source, should be covering. That's $180,000 budget a year that we need to be evaluating. We also need to put out to bid the city events such as the fireworks, great outdoors, summer concert series, Veterans Day Parade, and provide opportunities to the public sector, excuse me, private sector, to take up those events and put them on for the city. We don't have the luxury of doing them ourselves anymore. However, uh, I believe from many comments that have been made we can find people who would be willing to put these on and continue those services, but not at the cost of the city of Prescott or its taxpayers. In addition to that, in the recreation services presentation, there were nine or 10 additional bullet points of opportunities for public private partnerships on city properties. Those need to be evaluated and in the next 12 to 24 months implemented on a few of them. There are opportunities for us to begin creating revenue from our city owned properties. This does not get us all the way to the number that we're gonna have to get to. Uh, the last item that's not on here, but that I believe we need to start the discussions on now and the process is going to be
the business license and associated fee. We don't have a choice. Next year, we will be hundreds of thousands of dollars short again. The year after that, even more. This does not just get better because all of a sudden we cut $1.2 million or we found a million dollars of new revenue next year. We're going to have to find more cuts or more revenue. But this gives us a starting point to effectuate some of our changes without significantly impacting our service levels and giving us the time to make additional evaluations before we do something sweeping like shut down a fire station. So those are my comments based on the presentation that we had and something that I'd be happy to talk further about. Greg? I didn't, you didn't, I didn't put in two to, you to discuss forget. Charlie. I just had some questions. Okay. Comments? My question, Charlie, uh, these changes, do you suggest that, that the, that staff, uh, they've came, come with a list of, of possible uh, reductions and, and additions that will get us to the 1.2. And then we also know that the next year and the next year and the next year, uh, there'll be continued uh, cost increases uh, because of the circumstances. These changes, uh, have you put numbers to them uh, on what they would affect the changes that we are going to suggest be made in January 1st. Mayor, some of these we can put a specific number to. Other ones are going to require staff to do some evaluation. As an example, um, the recommendation related to the lake staff being retitled to reservoir staff and what percentage can be allocated to the water fund, I can't put a number. I know what the budget is. I know how much we spend on that. but. I can't say is it 50% of their workload, 40, 50, 60. Um, I can't get us there yet. But these are several of these are ideas that we have not evaluated um, or have not been looked at in the previous presentations as a way to offset some of the more significant immediate service cuts. So that being said, um, as we're moving through this process in the next few weeks, my expectation is that staff is going to take a look at some of these, come back and say, A, we can do it or we can't, and B, here is where, from a justifiable standpoint, we would land. Even if $100,000 of the lake staff was able to come from the water fund, which has its own revenue source, its own opportunities, um, that's $100,000 that we can consider in our 1.2 million cuts that we have to overcome here. So. Uh, Long answer to your question. Some of them have a number specifically affiliated with them. Some of them, we need more research from staff to understand what their benefit or impact would be before we can put a number to it. Mayor? Yes. Um, good job, Charlie. I think you got a lot of great ideas in there to help us uh, take some of the hurt out of, away from this. A couple things I'd be concerned about would be uh, using the police and code enforcement as revenue generating people rather than uh, the function of, uh, of public safety and things they do. And I, and I can see where that helps, but um, targeting commercial traffic for the purpose of generating revenue. I need to clarify, that's not what I'm proposing. Okay. We have two certified commercial enforcement officers in our department now who do commercial enforcement activities. What I'm proposing here is that staff looks at can a portion of their salary be paid for by the streets department? I see. This is not a, let's go out and pull over every commercial truck and give them a thousand dollar ticket. This is, should the streets fund, which benefits from commercial truck enforcement, be picking up part of the tab of that service being provided by our police department? That's what I'm asking to be looked at. Thanks for that clarification. That makes a lot of sense. And same thing with code enforcement and the right of way. They are out enforcing our codes and ordinances in right of way, which the streets department is responsible for. And so again, this is not citation based. This is should that fund and can that fund be picking up a portion of the operating costs? And that's the situation in any time where it's cost recovery, it's looking for that. And uh, another one maybe for some clarification on the uh, community risk reduction from the fire department. 
I think it's good that we offer the FireWise assessments for free. And I think in the long run, that saves us money and, and uh, it's hard enough to get people to do the FireWise as is. Yep. So to clarify on that one, if you submit a house permit or a commercial permit, the fire department is going to review it. The fire department's going to send inspectors out. We charge a fee for that that does not recover the service and the cost of that service that we provide. In addition, if you're building in the wildland urban interface, we do an inspection and there's requirements that you have to submit to the city. We are not cost recovering for that service that's being provided. So um, what I'm looking for there in this proposal, we may not get to 100% cost recovery for community risk reduction, but if we're currently recovering say 30%, can we push that number to 60 based upon the specific service they are providing to a user who's asking for that service. Great idea. And uh, what keeps popping up is the, uh, and I missed a lot of the, I mean, I was on vacation when this big discussion went on. The cost recovery for the 4th of July, I think, uh, I don't know if any staff could address this, but I think we already were cost recovering from that with the wristbands. I know that this year we actually even sold out our wristbands. Is there a way to keep, it's wildly popular. I don't know how many, what the numbers are that showed up at that last event, but I know they were huge. And it's really a local kind of uh, audience that's out there. It's something that we do do for our citizens. Could we possibly bump up the cost of the wristbands to cover some of the, the, uh, the fireworks and event that goes on and not lose this event that so many people are showing up to and it's wildly successful year after year? Mayor, if I may, and thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Cugno. This, this actually did come up during the last discussion, and generally when, when staff has been talking about cost recovery with the 4th of July before, it has been hard costs, and what hasn't been included in that is all the prep time, all of the staff time um, that's required to put that event on, and that's actually about 65000 more in the general fund than what we recover on those hard costs. So. Um, with the wristbands right now, we bring in about 65,000, so you'd be talking about doubling the cost of the wristband. So doing the RFP for a, um, outsourcing, that would be you know something that an operator would look at. Is the, does the math work? Are they, in their experience, gonna be able to bring in the number of people they need at the price point with all of the amenities they're providing and break even or make money as a private operator? And, and that's not how it's been looked at as a city event in the past. Thank you. And Chris, you opened my mind to one thing that I forgot to mention, and I want to go to the library for just a second, uh, because that's been one that's been talked about a lot. Um, there is an opportunity, I think, for additional dialogue with the county, per Steve's continued comments about funding. Um, I ultimately believe that we need to look at the formula that the county is using. Uh, for its disbursements. I agree with you 100% and they are in the process of formulating their budgets uh, for this coming year and now is the time to do that. If we can find ways that the county free library district can increase its support of the library, that has a direct correlation on what, if anything, has to be cut there. So. Jim. Thanks, Marlon. I look at this sort of differently, I guess. Um, Charlie, good, good comments. Um, I believe in cost recovery, especially on non-essential services where a lot of the people that live in the city put demands on our basic service delivery that are not something they're paying for per se. Um, individually paying for, I guess, is a good way to put it. And I do think that's important. I think it's also important to prioritize based on public safety and health issues above non-essential issues. Um, I guess my questions would be, well, same thing with violations of codes that we have in place. And we know you're not supposed to have a bunch of garbage in your yard. And you're not supposed to track all the rats throughout the neighborhood and all this other stuff. When you put other people in harm's way, you should be paying for that, mm -hmm. especially if our personnel are having to go out there and clean up this cesspool, so to speak. Chief, the proposal that you're putting forward today, are you confident with a city based on the size that we have it, the road structure that we have, the force that we have in place, that this community will be 
safe with what you have to work with? Mayor and um, Councilmember Emerson, um, a couple of points that I need to bring to the mayor and council to add to this discussion and answer your question. Uh, we are talking about service level reduction. When you reduce personnel, there's going to be an impact on service level. One of the things we're going to experience in Prescott um, is quality of service. And that doesn't mean that officers are going to deliberately do bad work. But what we're experiencing, and we just experienced it again this week, is we are losing seasoned officers. We lost an eight-year veteran earlier to a nearby agency, and we just this week uh, were told we're losing another eight-year veteran. We have some good young police officers in this city, high-quality people, but their inexperience is going to impact us as a community. Our citizens will feel it. It will show up in the quality of work. Not that they're not trying to do good work. They simply are not experienced. It takes five to eight years to really get a handle on being a good police officer. Police officers in our community, they, this is a calling for them. It's not just a job. They want to do the job. But I am not able to attract laterals because they come with experience and they want to be compensated for that. So we are hiring young, entry-level individuals. And to, to your comments, or our citizens will, will feel that inexperience. And as this continues, my, what I believe will occur within the police department is we will continue to lose experienced officers that have a huge impact on the quality of police service in our community. Uh, that, that is going to be felt. Thank, thank you for your comment and your candor. I'm, I'm fairly concerned with regards to the demographic shift, the criminality shift in Prescott, especially with regards to drug rehab, alcohol rehab, what it attracts to the community, the crime level it attracts to the community. I'm, I'm somewhat concerned over different things, but my question still remains the same. You posed a problem. The problem was to bring a solution. Are the citizens in Prescott safe with what you have to work with? Council Member, that's, that's a challenging question to answer. Uh, I know it is, and if I didn't have confidence in you answering it, I wouldn't ask it. Right, so in, in theory, young, inexperienced police officers will investigate criminal matters to the level of training and experience they have. But a seasoned officer who, who has a police sense will know and understand criminal behavior and patterns in a way that the younger officers may not. So as our force is younger and our, we lose our experience, serial criminals may take advantage of that opportunity and see it as an opportunity. I think there's a point of clarification that needs to be made, at least in my mind. Retention has to do heavily with pay, which none of these proposals even comes close to being able to address, Right. period. So the clarification that I would ask for, Jim, if you'd allow me just for a moment, if we make adjustments such as the ones that you see listed up here, is that going to impact the safety of the citizens of Prescott? I understand the retention problem. I mean, we're a more than a dollar an hour less than Prescott Valley. What do you think is going to happen? People are going to leave. And we are losing great employees, great officers as a result. But that class and comp issue is going to eventually come down to, in order to retain these five people, this person's not going to be here anymore. But the question I have in follow-up to Jim's is, of these changes, does it have a negative impact on the safety of the citizens of Prescott? Yeah. Mayor, uh -huh. Councilmember Arnold, uh, any reduction to the staffing at the police department could have a negative impact on the safety of the people of this community. We are staffed at a certain level because mayor and council saw fit years ago to staff us at that level. The need was presented. We recognize that. I would offer that any reduction, and, and I understand the challenge that mayor and council has 
to wrestle with this issue. We, we're, we're in this position and we've got to find a longer term solution. But the correct answer to both of your questions is any reduction in staffing at the police department could have a negative impact on the safety of this community. We're, we're in a public workshop here. Yes, sir. Having public dialogue for very public reasons. And the fact of the matter is, I think I heard you loud and clear, no. We're not really as safe as we would like to be. And I heard that, okay? I also heard with regards to comp and all that other stuff that we're, we're lower than other areas. And I know that too, Charlie. But I've argued for 12 years as I've sat here with regards to priorities. And I've argued for a long time, I do not like a budget <clears throat> that pits O&M of two basic services, police and fire, two of the most basic services this community has for public safety with non-essentials every year in a budget cycle. We have yet to come up with a solution to an attainable funding source in the city of Prescott to ensure that this community remains safe from either wildland fire, structure fire, blah, 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 or the bad guys. And a lot of what we're having to deal with aren't the citizens of Prescott. It's imported. It's coming from outside. It's coming from down in the valley. It's being shipped here from all over the planet in the name of rehabilitation and disability and blah, 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 blah. But we're having to deal with it. So I heard that loud and clear. I want the public to hear it loud and clear too. Because here we are, we're, we're here today trying to figure out what's our next step. I heard from the police chief. Now I would like to hear from the fire chief. chief. Good afternoon, Councilman. I, I got a question. I really do. Are we fully staffed for wildland fire in the immediate proximity of the city of Prescott? I don't care about the rest of the planet. That's not my job. I don't want firemen working for me off in Oregon someplace or off in, you know, Kentucky or someplace like that. I want the citizens of Prescott kept safe. That's my job. My job isn't to farm out firemen or cops or anybody else to other communities all over the planet in the name of some sort of a cost recovery effort so that we can employ more people. I want to make sure that the people that live here, that are paying taxes here, that are dependent on this place for a living are safe. Are we safe? Uh, in our current staffing model and our deployment model, we are appropriately staffed to provide a level of service that has been accustomed to within this current community. And as the police chief said, any reduction in that staffing level would have some degree of impact to the service level that is currently accustomed to by the community. The other thing that I'd like to point out is that the system, unlike uh, our police colleagues, uh, is not being driven by a need for retention. I have a very fine very low number of turnover outside of retirements. We don't have people that uh, job shop and jump around as much as my law enforcement colleagues. Uh, with that, we've been able to attract and retain local talent to fill most of those needs. Uh, we also recognize that it is an interdependent system with our key automatic aid partners, which includes central, actually it's now the Central Arizona Fire Authority. Uh, the two districts that surround us, we run to their calls, they run to our calls, and we gain from mutual benefit of economy of scale in staffing the region's fire services. As far as off-district type work, uh, that number has been drawn down, I think, this past year. Uh, we sent a total of three people off at the height of the season elsewhere. Uh, I've adopted when I got onto the job a year ago no more than a 10% reduction to ensure that this community does not suffer any service reduction as a result of people going around elsewhere to fight fires. Thank you for your comments. I guess that's the end of my uh, dissertation or whatever it would be. I do, I do appreciate both of the chiefs. So, manager, I guess, you know, as we go back and forth on this whole issue, I've been dealing with this for a long time. This is what you're recommending. And, um, well, not count, so Councilman, excuse me, <clears throat> it is not a recommendation. We mm -hmm. made that very clear at the October 6th workshop, and I apologize for any misconception. Uh, <coughs> this is not a recommendation. In no way, shape, or form to date has a recommendation been made. What we identified was department by department potential 
reductions in expenses or revenue enhancements that the council working with the staff could consider. So what we hope to arrive at is some combination of those uh, which will in fact be the final plan. So as we sit here today, we do not have recommendations from any of these departments. Thank you for your clarification. I apologize for my misunderstanding. But here's the point that I'm trying to point out. This is what you're forwarding me to look at. That's what I see. After hearing from my chief of police, after hearing from my ch fire chief, I'm not so sure that I like what I'm seeing here on the paper. So we can go back to the drawing board. We still have time. <clears throat> I would like some of my stuff addressed at some point with regards to I want to see what can be handled as a permanent, dependable funding mechanism so that police and fire to the level of public safety in this community is not challenged every budget year, every time we sit down because we provide this service, this service, or this service that has nothing to do with basic service. I haven't seen it yet, so that's where I'm at. Great. Well, Mayor, I have a few comments to make, too. Okay, we'll get to you in a moment. Greg's up. Okay, thanks. Did you have a quick comment you wanted to make? No, I just, uh, just really quick, thanks, Greg, to, to what he's talking about. That's a, that is a rough question to answer, because that's like saying, w would the citizens of Prescott be safer if we added five firemen and added five policemen? You know, it's, it's staffing levels. Um, we, we talk about are the citizens of Prescott going to be safe? One thing I'd worry about after doing the ride-alongs, are the officers going to be safe? You know, when, when I did one of those, we sent an uh, officer by himself to a bar fight on Whiskey Row. I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to go by myself to a domestic disturbance by myself or to maybe a possible armed robbery by myself. That's where I'd worry about it. But the answer is we need to bring in more revenue. That's what we do. We ask the people of Prescott to do that. The same ones that were worried about being safe, we ask them to pay an extra 0.55% on every purchase that's made in Prescott, and they told us they did not want that. They did not want the extra tax. That means we have to reduce the service levels. We're going to be less safe. That's the message that we were sent. Send them a message. We got the message. Now, maybe in a couple of years, that message will be different when they see that this is real. Like I said, government has cried poor for so long that no one believes us when we say that it's real. Well, it's real and it's here. Um, you can either tax, you can raise revenue. That's why I'm such a fan of the economic development. I think we're right on the edge to make that happen, and I wish it would just cook. Um, thank you, Greg, for letting me throw those things in there. But, you know, we got to think about not only the citizens of Prescott, but when you have your first responders go out there, are they safe themselves? You said it was going to be quick. I know, I lied. Sorry, <laughs> politician, but I'm out pretty soon. Um, I have a couple questions. Can you put that original slide back up, Mark? Okay, we uh, we determined that we were going to go across the board and and try to you know let everybody feel this, but um, I don't know. I, I look at the police department and I see it felt extremely hard. That doesn't seem right to me. C Councilman, again, uh, this is not a recommendation. This I know. is strictly for example about. You know, we have a set. We we presented a 70-slide PowerPoint sure. presentation, department by department, and this was simply an example to try to organize that information on what a 1.2 million dollar reduction might look like. I guess I was just reflecting there in in my mind, having a reflection moment there. Um, <laughs> Mary or 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 Chief, uh, what is a what does a new officer get? Uh, you hire a new officer with benefits of roughly. What is that? Uh, Forty-two. Forty-two yeah. with benefits. Well, the fully loaded cost is right there. You ha you have four hundred and forty-three thousand dollars, which is five vacant mm -hmm. positions. You divide that by five, and it's eighty thousand and some change. So, by the time you hire the officer and mark it up for all the benefits, including PSPRS, you're at over eighty thousand dollars. Okay. All right. And uh, 
I just had, uh, and that's what I just need to know was how much an officer costs a new officer. Yes, sir. And then I've got some other, you know, we're, we're looking down the row here and we got, we got something from the library and it looks like that they were willing to do quite a bit there, but when they were saying something about three entrances hard to cover, I figured we could like maybe close two and put emergency exit on it and man one, one uh, entrance, the lower entrance. Um, you know, we, we shell out money uh, to economic pay, uh, economic development between uh, GPAC and uh, the Downtown Partnership and we're partners with, uh, with um, uh, the Chamber of Commerce. I mean, do we need all the economic uh, incentive uh, payroll that we, we have? These are just ideas I'm throwing out there. Uh, the library didn't uh, include any type of technology fee. I'm not asking a fee for the books, but uh, technology, uh, I know for a fact, uh, libraries and other institutions are paying, there is a fee to use the technology. So I'd like to see that explored more. Um, what is a raise to retain, give them a buck 50? What is that number? Maybe we can cost recover that with some of your ideas. It's a quarter million dollars just to give patrol a dollar raise, yeah. at minimum. Minimum quarter million dollars a year. Uh, Councilman, may, may I interject that, uh, again, in that lengthy October 6th presentation, uh, at the end, there was a pretty affirmative statement that we are going to recommend for the 17 budget, fiscal year 17 budget, implementing the classification and compensation sure. study. And we have some catch up to do. So that's a million dollars potentially in the general fund right there. But as we said before, we absolutely have to be competitive in the marketplace or we are looking at what, what uh, Chief Monahan described, not having those, those mid-career or older, more seasoned personnel. Right. And beyond that, uh, if, we're not, if we're even less competitive, we're not gonna get anybody who's even applying to work here. Sure. So that's an absolute must. The downside of that, Is it to pay work? for that, you have to lay people off. You have to reduce expenses somewhere. And that's the important thing that again, every time we have this discussion, it's like Groundhog Day, the city of Prescott only has very limited sources of revenue in its general fund. We've been over that, over that, over and over and over, and that is the result of decades of state law changes that has to do with decisions that were made by this community with respect to its property tax and so forth. We live in a context where we have a neighbor to the east that's grown rapidly, which has diluted the sales tax and so forth. So those are the realities. Um, sure, we have some opportunities here that have been described to enhance revenues in such a way that are appropriate. That, you know, you cost recover the service, which is a specialized service for a particular type of customer, and those are all valid. But overall, you know, we're, we are in the corner right. with respect to revenue. And, and I get, I'm not questioning the adjustment recommendations. I guess what I'm, without, without the overheads that Charlie did, I'm just doing some free thinking here and putting some ideas out there. Um, Councilman, could I offer one yes. comment based on that? Um, just so there's no wrong idea about the officers that work here. Uh, our officers love Prescott. They want a career here. The seasoned officers that we're losing, uh, they're looking at the long-term ramifications of, of their career, and by going so long without a compensation adjustment, well, sure, they uh, have family that, and that has else. an impact yeah. throughout the rest of their life. So but the other thing we're challenged with right now is neighboring departments are actively recruiting our people because of the quality of people the we have. Uh, we have got good officers, and they are being courted daily by the agencies around us. I guess my point is, and Charlie, you had some great recommendations, and I, as, as much as I would, I would, um, uh, I'm against the uh, fundamentally about charging more on the economic end for, for um, permits and whatnot, I'm up with Jim on this. I ran on basic services, and that is um, uh, streets, sewer, water, and most importantly, public safety, fire, and police. And 
I just, I think I cannot support unless, I, I'm right there with Jim. I believe that these cuts are gonna hurt the safety of our, of our community. And I just wanna see some deeper cuts elsewhere uh, for me to go get on board with this. Okay. Uh, Steve, could you, let's uh, let uh, Jean jump in. She's uh, somewhere in 10 buck too. Jean, jump on. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I agree with most of what Charlie has put up on the board there, having taken copious notes, listening to him explain it. Um, I'd like to make some comments, though, on uh, funding for the police. I think the 10% is way out of line and way too much to cut for a basic public safety service. Eliminating five positions, I just can't agree with that because it when you take people off patrol, that means the other patrol officers have to absorb the work. It puts more stress on them, and that's going to have an effect on recruitment and retention. Increased response times just isn't acceptable. We have an average of seven minute response time all over the city. To me, that's too much. We need a, a greater police presence and we definitely need the school resource officer in the high school because high school kids need to understand that public safety is a friend. It's not their enemy. It's not us versus them. And they learn that when they're that age, when they're hanging around an SRO at the school. Um, I, I really think that we need to keep uh, most of what has been offered up as a 10 percent cost, cost, cost cut from the police department but there are a couple of cuts that um i spoke with chief monahan about that he thinks they could live without one animal control officer one records clerk um reducing overtime um as i understand it now we are not charging uh every single community event for overtime of officers and i think we should be um, if one has to pay, the others have to pay. For example, Whiskey Off-Road, um, they do pretty well financially, and I think they could afford to pay for our police officer overtime. And one other item that uh, Chief Monahan had on his list here is that we haven't talked about is the false alarm program. If we had a registration program for everyone who had an alarm that alerted 911, when uh, their alarm went off, then we would have more information about where those alarms are, how they can be disabled so they're not ringing obnoxiously forever. And we could have the uh, registr registrant pay a small fee, generating enough money to cover that particular position. So I think that the police budget really needs to be reevaluated and my position is the cuts are too deep there. Fire departments, um, I'm all for charging for non-emergency services like responding to snake removal, bee removal, uh, getting the cat out of the tree and that sort of thing. Um, I'm willing to try browning out a station, uh, kind of skeptical about it, but we might have to, we might have to do that. One question I had uh, for the chief is about uh, why we have two division chiefs. It, it, looking at the organizational chart on page 21 of our materials from the last meeting, um, it doesn't seem like we need two division chiefs and possibly one of those could be eliminated this year. Not sure. Uh, another question is, could we have a battalion chief that rotates among the stations so that you can actually have um, less than a rolling brownout where you've got a battalion chief who uh, is constantly moving around among the stations so that you do have a four-man crew most of the time at most stations. So that's police and fire. Gene, um, Gene uh, Chief Light here, I can respond to a couple of that. has been cut to the bone. There are a few uh, things that could be nipped and tucked, but they're going to save maybe uh, ten to fifty thousand dollars. That's not very much. That library is 
a key asset for the city of Prescott, the community. And I've said this before, that I think libraries are really a, a foundation for maintaining our democracy. It's a place where people get information. Uh, they're not just tuned into one television station, but they have access to all kinds of information at the library and all kinds of resources. And in response to um, Councilman LaFell's suggestion that we, we charge for internet use, I asked that question of Roger Staff and was told that the uh, computers are another form of a book. And as part of being a free library district, we are not allowed to charge for computer use. So we want to keep that library district funding. That's, that's a big chunk of their um, budget. And I don't think we want to, want to go there. The library hours are pretty critical also to um, maintaining public access. You know, it's the one, those meeting rooms are the one place where groups that aren't formally organized with membership fees and so forth can get together and have a meeting. And they can do it without cost. I think we do need to keep the library open at least uh, three nights a week and for Sunday afternoon, very important. And that means that we need to keep the staff. I would much rather look at cutting things like uh, materials and supplies and keep the people in whom we've invest invested training and uh, time and the ability to cover for our permanent staff when they're sick or taking their uh, vacations that they're allowed under our policy. So the library, 50% of what was proposed is way too much. Um, much less than that would be palatable, although I'd rather not have the library, um, but some is okay. Uh, we definitely need to move forward now on business licenses and the business tax. Uh, that's gonna take months to get into place and we need to go through some public comment period on that and our implementation date if we're lucky we could get it implemented uh, the beginning of next fiscal year so that we could be able to absorb some of the money the debt reduction on the pension fund it was a great idea from uh well put together by the city attorney i know we've we've kind of bounced around with it before but it's something many other cities do, and I think it's time for us to take advantage of that one uh, revenue opportunity that we have. And another one I've mentioned before are dog licenses. Uh, right now they cost $2. And uh, according to information I got from the police department, um, in the last 12 months, going up to September of 2015, there were 3,553 licenses issued. And if we were to charge $50 each, uh, the gross revenue from that would be $177,650. Now that would support at least one sworn officer and one animal control officer. I think that's worth considering because this is a dog town and people love their dogs. If we can get 3,553 people to license their dogs for $2, I think we can get at least that many to license them for $50, because their dogs are worth it. Uh, turning the library district over to the Board of Supervisors as Board of Directors is a really bad idea because it turns over the library to another political entity, and when the political winds shift, they could easily uh, reduce service close the city library, who knows what. It's beyond, it's out of our control and beyond us. So I think we need to keep our library and we need to keep it well funded. And uh, that's, that's all I have to say. Okay, Jean, uh, uh, we'll, we'll save a spot for you later. Uh, Steve? Can you put that first slide back up there, please? <clears throat> well, first of all, I'm not going to nickel and dime this thing to death. I'm just going to say, yeah, say it the way I feel. 
Gene mentioned key assets being the library. I think our key assets are public safety. And I said it publicly that I'm not willing to cut public safety. The bottom line is when you start looking at these numbers, Charlie, thank you for your work. But when you start looking at these certain things up there, we're surgically removing different bits and pieces of the fabric that make up Prescott, Arizona, in my opinion. We're going to remove the one council assistant that we have, our council secretary, that we all rely on heavily, and we put that burden now on whom? Every one of these things that we're going to eliminate is going to put the burden on someone else. We look at the code enforcement officer, all of a sudden we're going to eliminate him or we're going to put the burden on our officers that are already overburdened with everything they're doing. So for every cause, there's a reverse cause. I sit here and I listen to what's important to different council members. And the key asset in our community is public safety. When you start talking about a business license tax, I agree that needs to move as fast as it can go. And that business license needs to be tied directly to public safety. When you start talking about losing officers, it's not only about pay, it's about benefits. When they're not given the benefits for themselves or their, their spouses or their families, whether it's teeth, whatever, whatever it might be, they're going away. That's part of the overall package. And I think we've done a pretty poor job. For me to sit here and listen to how we need to save the library, I will never say I want to cut the library or close the library. That's never been my intention. My intention has been that in the charter, which I have right here, it calls for a free library. It does not say how many days a week it has to be free. Nobody pays a thing, whether it's a fee. Nobody has offered to put a kiosk at the three entrances and call it a donation. There is zero cost recovery for a building that's got over a $2 million budget. I'm appalled that this community can't stand up and say, we will support our public library. Regardless of whoever came up with the idea that this education purpose for the library needs to be free. I went on, on, on record, I'll do it again here, on the radio saying that I will take my next year's salary at $6,000 on this council bench, give it to the library for people that can't afford to pay a fee. When I listened to Mr. Staff tell me there's 28,000 people that have library cards at no charge, if we put $50 donation to each one of those cards, we just corrected this problem. But we as a community want to say, let's, let's dilapidate fire, let's dilapidate police, let's take away parks and recreation, let's take away quality of life. Because people are unwilling to pay for what they're using for, I'm appalled and I will not support anything that cuts public safety. Charlie. We asked the question for the average household to contribute $128 a year to avoid this problem. I have basically heard, we can't cut this, we're not gonna touch that. We're nowhere close to $1.2 million of actually being able to operate. I guess we can just default on our problems. Yep, let's go create a million dollars of new revenue through a business license tax. Don't fix anything, don't worry, next year, We'll deal with it again. The year after that, we'll deal with it again. These numbers are going to be different for every department. Police is the largest budget item in the general fund, followed by fire. Then you've got library, recreation services, and these other ones. I mean, we're talking like what, $12 million a year, $13 million a year. So you've got to keep these in perspective. and. I look back at what was given to us 10 days ago as potential budget adjustments. Eliminate five current vacant sworn positions. Reassign a school resource officer. Reassign a detective to patrol. Reduce parking enforcement. Eliminate police aid. Eliminate code enforcement. Eliminate records clerk. Eliminate crime prevention officer. Eliminate animal control officer. Eliminate administrative specialist. Reduce overtime. When we start talking about 
eliminate two of our vacant positions, reduce code in, or parking to part-time, reduce code enforcement until we have a business license that, by the way, can pay for that service, reduce crime prevention to part-time, eliminate one animal control officer. All of these other things, I'm not looking at touching. I think we have something in our police aid that most communities would strive for. We have an explore program that trains our kids in this community to become a police officer. This gives them the opportunity in that transition from high school to the, being the academy age and being able to come work for us. We've got an employee who we're going to retain as long as we can pay them, as long as we can provide the benefits longer term, who's rooted in our community, who cares about our community. We have officers who have chosen to come here from departments and cities that I would never want to be a cop in because of what Prescott is. I grew up in a community where every time, Prescott Police Department's the gold standard. It's what everybody's aspired to. I don't want to talk about cuts. Cuts suck. I don't know how else to put it, but we've got to be realistic. We've got to get through all the political minutia and crap and get to the bottom of understanding we have a $1.2 million problem this year that is going to grow. Next year, if the council can give raises, which I hope they can, good. But where are those cuts going to continue to come from? We don't just create a new revenue stream and everything's hunky-dory and fine. We have to get serious and let's start talking about not political opinion. Let's start talking about what we're going to do to get us to $1.2 million this year. I don't like having to say, let's take away someone's livelihood. I don't get joy out of sitting there typing this up, but I don't want to sit through another meeting and accomplish nothing because the citizens of Prescott deserve better and our employees deserve a plan that says, here's how we're going to move Prescott forward. Here's what we're going to do to provide the jobs that we can afford, the services we can afford, and this is how we're going to get our employees the pay that we need to get them over the next couple of years because that's what it's going to take. I've said it before, if we don't fix these problems, Prescott is not going to be a community I want to live in in five years. So let's get through the political crap and start talking about what we have to do now so that we have a city. I wasn't speaking politically, just from the heart, uh, Chris. You know, um, just on the business license end of things, you know, I think we can only charge what it costs to administer that anyway, so it's no uh, additional rev revenue stream. The city attorney can probably add to this, but the fee can only be cost recovery of the program, but the charter specifically allows for a business tax that can be charged on top of it. That's been approved since the 70s, I believe. And you know, this uh, $1.25 million is this year. I agree with you, Charlie, that's this year. It's going to go up again next year and the year after that and the year after that. I mean, we could charge $100 per dog for a dog license, and that ain't going to catch up to what's going on with us. I mean, it's, it's, this problem is huge. Oh, and by the way, we haven't paid in one more dollar to get that uh, PSPRS liability down. Oh, which, by the way, is expected to go up even more in November. So we have this huge credit card bill still standing out there that we're not able to do anything about. You know, I always come back to, Mr. Lamerson said something one meeting, and I'll, I'll butcher your quote, Jim, but uh, be careful not to ruin the good things that we got established in this community. And um, we're talking about a lot of those things. You know, if you're struggling in your business, do you stop advertising? No, you, you send out a bulk mailer, you send put ads on the radio, you get your revenue bumping up there. Um, tourism efforts, our economic development efforts. You know, w with PDP, we, we, they came up. They run our courthouse events for us. They run other events for us, parades for us. They beautify downtown. They keep an inventory of downtown. And they do it for a fraction of what it would cost us to do ourselves. And these are very important functions that we got. You know, there's reasons that we keep getting on the list of the best place to retire, top 10 list to retire. It's because we have these quality of life things going on. Now. We have to make some adjustments, but I think we got to be very careful not to screw up the good things that we got going, that we're the envy of other cities in the state on a lot of things. 
you know, our downtown concert series. Yeah, we should be going out there and trying to get someone to subsidize it. I think someone else is going to subsidize it. But we have to keep these things in place because that's what that's what we care about and that's what makes us the community we are. So uh, let's let's just be careful, guys, moving forward. I just I'm going to finish up by saying real simply, and I, and I need to make it crystal clear from my perspective. This 1.2 can be accomplished simply by what I was suggesting at the library. Real simple. You ask the people that have a library card for a donation. You put a kiosk at the three doors and ask for a donation. You, you raise the hours so it's open more, so people can enjoy it more. I'm not advocating having Mr. McConnell go out and look for a private library operator, which they're out there, that would cost these library patrons thousands of dollars over a period of time. I'm not asking necessarily that it goes to the county to have the county take over the building. What I'm asking for is people to pay for their use or donate to that use. If we can generate that much money out of the library, and it's been said by Roger, 28,000, 28,000 library cards paying zero or donating zero. You can pick up that cost right there and buy a, a, a million dollar uh, business license, as Mr. McConnell alluded to. Now, every single year, you can look at having $2.5 million so it's dedicated to public safety for raises and for paying PSPRS. We don't have to keep going in here and surgically removing positions and doing the quality of life things. Let's ask people to put their money where their mouth is at that library for a donation of $50 a year. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and I'll put it in account tomorrow. Somebody's got to start standing up and saying everything is not for free in this community. Cost recovery is important. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Craig, uh, a few questions. I'm Marlon. That's Steve. I'm sorry. That's okay. We don't even look alike, okay? I'm just sure that we are. You, know, you don't. No, thank, thanks. Yeah, I just recognize that. And, and, and Steve and, uh, you know, Gene, while you're, while you're at it, talking about business licenses and people paying for what they use, I guess we could also implement not only dog licenses, but we could get bicycle registration and bicycle licenses too because you know you got to have a car license to yeah. be on the streets and what have you, you also got to have insurance and stuff like that so yeah we can look yeah. at a lot of things for cost recovery it all sounds reasonable to me yeah craig on uh, uh jim uh, uh regularly we'll talk about a dedicated uh, source for public safety uh we have one today it's uh, called general fund and it comes from sales tax. And unless there's been a change, and there probably has a, a small, 73% uh, of our general fund collections go to pay our public safety bill. Is that still a good number? There's a pie chart there someplace. Yes, yeah, I was okay. looking for the pie chart now, here. Uh, and I know you, you don't have a calculator here, but uh, let's make an assumption that we leave public safety totally intact and that there, there's, some, there's some folks here that feel that way. Then what is that percentage of that pie chart next year going to be for public safety if there's no changes? Well, it's obviously going to increase. It's going to be somewhere in the 80%. Yeah. And we still have to run a city. We still have to have city government and parks and rec and all these things. So now they have to operate on 20% or less yeah. of our dedicated source sales tax. It, that's not going to work. Yeah. It's not going to work. And we can talk about it all day long, but we, we take in so much money. And uh, if, if uh, uh, everybody's got to pull the wagon uh, and and I, I really hope that uh, that that all departments will come back together and say uh, we're gonna make this work until times are better and then it's going to take a year to make times better none of these things are going to happen overnight so not only are you going to have to face up to this 1.2 Next year, just the 
pay compensation uh, uh, analysis is going to cost you a million dollars more if you want to keep these eight-year veterans. And I totally agree. I understand that 100%. Uh, so where do you go, where do you go back in, to general fund and get that million? And uh, in November, we'll find out what PSPRS. I, uh, I give you a three or four page letter today uh, written by one of the PSPRS people uh, commending themselves on doing a wonderful job of keeping costs under control. Uh, and, and they walk away totally immune to the problems that they're not only creating this. I talk to a lot of the mayors. And everybody's got the same problem. It's just the fact that maybe we're facing a little different, more in the open, and admitting that we do have a problem. But uh, uh, the sales tax, uh, that's very competitive out here. It's not the Prescott that uh, uh, 30 years ago we were the king of the hill. Uh, the other people are in the business, and we've got our friends to the east that probably within three or four hours will increase their sales tax by a half percent. And uh, I don't know, just from what I heard on the radio, there was four or five people there concerned about that. And we asked for 0.55 and went to the public with a, with a real program and a need for it. And we were told, no, handle it, handle it some other way. So uh, I would hope that the new council, uh, uh, as soon as possible, uh, will be able to take a whole look at, at uh, what we're going through, what this council is finishing up with, and uh, finding a way to, to go back to the public. Uh, it's a public responsibility uh, to provide funding to run a community. It's just a matter of how we do it. So uh, uh, I think for today, uh, unless there's uh, more from, the, from us, uh, that uh, we're going to talk about this again mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and see where the, the real interest. Uh, Steve, if there's, a, if there's somebody over at the library that uh, uh, is as dedicated as you, I commend you. You've been here a long time. Your mom and dad were active. You're I've been active. talking about this a long yeah. time, too, and, it, and it's still not been the case, so maybe I'm just talking into the wind. But, you know, Mayor, I, I, I believe that in the condition that we're in in this community, I think everybody has an yeah. obligation to step up. Well, I, I think there's, there's a lot of folks out there that agree with you. Uh, but uh, some people just don't want to pay for nothing because they pay their water bill on time while they're a great taxpayer in the community. And that's their participation in the community. And, and there's, uh, there's other things. But uh, uh, it's real. And if we don't give you uh, some some opportunities to cut cost of doing business of the city by January 1st, then we're not doing our job. So uh, that said, unless somebody has something uh, further, why uh, we can take this one home and um, go I, ahead. I have a question, Mayor. Shoot. Uh, Craig, um, what date would be the next discussion and what would that discussion entail about this? Well, um, I just want to publicly. No, November 3rd. Okay. Yes, November 3rd is what we're looking at. That's a regular council workshop meeting. And what I was going to suggest uh, is that uh, Councilman Arnold has uh, provides, you know, a proposal, an outline of a proposal, let's say, or items to consider. Uh, and we can certainly cost that out. I think that, uh, you know, the, the value of today's discussion was uh, the discussion itself. And obviously, uh, you know, we can develop a couple of scenarios, and I'm, I'm talking about like two or three max, because beyond that, it's just counterproductive. Uh, one of those scenarios would be to, um, and, and I'm not suggesting that we can get there without making any adjustments in police and fire department, um, but one of the scenarios would be a uh, preservation uh, or an emphasis on retaining uh, public safety funding. Uh, another would be uh, making, you know, some reductions and so forth in public safety, but perhaps nothing that you've seen before. So we'll try to work on that. Okay. Uh, that's, that's the way I think we'll be able to get to where we need to get. Thank you. Anyone else? Charlie? We're adjourned.